Mateo Vespucci on the ground, wounded in the back with a dagger. That is the representation that calls the way in which Giuliano de' Medici was killed in 1478 in the Cathedral of Florence with the help of Piero de Guti's daughter, Bianco de' Medici, married to a Pazzi. La figlia di Piero Gottoso, Bianca de' Medici, sposata a un Pazzi. E, esatto, questa immagine. Correct, this image. And in the part of the foliage, above the scene of Giuliano, rushing to the aid of Simonetta Catiano Vespucci, wounded in the back, you can see a kind of passage that references the passage through Panama. This is probably because the first voyages to the Americas were going the east way, and therefore the first approach is through the Atlantic Ocean. Sorry, the Pacific, not the Atlantic. La via dell'est e quindi il primo approccio è attraverso l'Oceano Atlantico e è Pacifico e non Atlantico. Il passaggio sull'Oceano The passage on the Atlantic Ocean is suggested later on by Paolo dal Pochi Toscanelli, who leaves a description to a Portuguese canon, Martinez, and makes a description for his king, then for the king of Portugal, in which he says to give up the way from Guinea because there is a much more direct way traveling west to reach the coast of the New World where the houses are covered with gold. Clearly we talk about the myth of El Dorado, etc. Then, if you want, we will also talk about El Dorado. In the next image, always in this cycle by Botticelli, there is the Lady of Mali. That is a reference to that old way to Guinea. Un rimando a quella vecchia via verso la Guinea. What is the protrusion that looks like a woman and therefore correct? So what happens? The church intervenes. Let me get this straight then. Over here is the Botticelli painting, and over here, where is this mountain? You see it? It's in Guinea. It's called Lady of Mali, and it's one of the places where the expeditions to the New World started from. That's what I was missing. Prima dicevi, Perché è così importante? Sorry, before you said why is it so important the issue about Innocent VIII and why this double personality? Because there is a painting. I'm shuffling the cards a little bit, but the director has been very good. Esiste un dipinto, sto cambiando un po' le carte in tavola, i ragazzi reggiamo sono bravissimi. Esiste un dipinto del 1451. There is a painting from 1451 by Piero della Francesca in which there is a representation, not precise, more, of North America and the Gulf of Mexico with Yucatan, this one, with de Yucatan, Florida, on the bottom, under the muzzle of the white dog, is Cuba. The black and white dogs represent the order of the Dominicans that underlie, as I said before, the events of the Americas. Okay. Okay. This same representation. No, first I want to tell you a particular detail. It's crazy. Piero, 1451. This is impressive. Because you can even see that. There is a lake that has an unpronounceable name in Florida that can be recognized. There is another very small lake above Florida that bears my wife's name, Marion. And this is just crazy because between everything you can recognize. Okay. But then there is always my big doubt. How do you make such a realistic map if you don't have the visibility from above? Because it's okay that one goes back and forth and measures steps. I don't know. But how do you do it? I mean, you can do it in broad terms, but not. Correct. That's why I wanted to solve it out at the root with Antarctica, because that cuts the bull's head off. In the sense, that any doubt you might have about these representations, you solve it at the root with that other representation. But on the subject, why did I let you have this painting? Because Piero la Francesca painted it in 1451, when in the pseudo-historical reconstruction Columbus was born. Do you know when Piero della Francesca died? October 12, 1492, which is not a date by chance. Appreciate the fact that I'm not swearing here. October 12, 1492 is important because there is another painting by Pisanello, the vision of Saint Eustace, in which a character, which I recognize to be 
Domenico Malatesta, this one, has in front of him, under the deer, a vision of South America. So, Saint Estache is seeing South America. Again, the dogs appear, recalling the Dominicans, but in the Roman martyrology. Then always from the east, so this also comes back. Nel martyrolo, esatto. Correct. In the Roman martyrology, Saint Eustace is today celebrated on the 30th of September. But before 1492, according to the Golden Legend by Jacopo di Varazze, Saint Estuace is celebrated when? No, I don't want to say that. October 12th. So what happens? It happens that the story of the Americas that we know is attributed to Christopher Columbus actually in fact begins to take on a whole series of elements that are recurrent in the initial events of the first trips to the Americas. There is another important document, and so we close the circle on the documents. This is the Hesperus of Basilio di Parma. Basilio di Parma writes this set of poems to celebrate Pandolfo Sigimondo Malatesta, the loser. Ezra Pound defines him the best loser in all of history. In reality, he is a loser who takes on a whole series of actions in order to reassemble the dominant role of Domenico Malatesta, who is clearly a humanist, etc. Dominante di Domenico Malatesta, che nei suoi riguardi è chiaramente un umanista, eccetera, eccetera. Nel nell'esperienza di Basilio da Parma, in the Hesperus of Basilio da Parma. The military deeds of Pandolfo Sigismondo are narrated. But at a certain point, some images appear, four, in which Pandolfo Sigismondo leaves a caravel, shipwrecks, arrives on the lucky island, and there he stops in the temple of Zephyr with the beloved Isotta. Nel tempio di Zephyro con l'amata Isotta. Stiamo parlando dell'isola di San Salvador. We are talking about the island of San Salvador, where Columbus will shipwreck. So you can understand that the story of Columbus is a totally invented story using true elements of the first excursions to the Americas, clearly made by the opposite faction. And in order to avoid the claiming of this faction as a primogenitor, what gets done? Inquisitions. The Inquisitions are supported to, first, protect the Catholic foundation against Neoplatonism, which is the real obstacle to the spread of Catholicism in the 15th century. But above all, they are made to protect this farce of the discovery of the Americas. At a certain point, you say there is someone in the Catholic world who says, now we're going to attribute the discovery of the Americas, because it's no good if we give too much political power to another faction. And so how do we discover the Americas? Well, let's see what we know about the Americas. They go and get all the elements, paintings, the maps, the tales, etc., and decide to invent a story, to take ownership. Yes, a story, because if you talk about a shipwreck, then, I mean, and the whole story of Nina La Pinta and Santa Maria and all the things that we are taught in school. Allora, Nina, Pinta e Santa sono le tre figlie di Piero il Gottoso. So, Nina, Pinta and Santa are the three daughters of Piero the Guti who are represented in the Chapel of the Magi. Then, where Cosimo di Medici wears the Mascai Pacha in three different positions. They almost seem to navigate in the cycle of frescoes that there is on three sides with the Masca Pacha on their head, changing clothes and using exotic ones. Then the three daughters are called Lucrezia, Bianca and Maria. Maria was adopted, hence Santa. Lucrezia was nicknamed Nanina, Nina. So there is a strong, I had also found a document that certifies that the nickname of the three daughters was Nina, Pinta because painted by Botticelli and Santa just because she was adopted, but I can no longer find it. But it seems that the name of the three caravels is in fact, was the name of the three daughters of Piero the Guti, and therefore it further justifies an element of those first trips that that was then used. Do you want to know where the mass of the caravels that have returned are in fact? Because as you know, one was shipwrecked and two returned in the Cathedral of Siena. There are two mass that are associated with a 13th century carriage. In reality, they are the two mass of two caravels. Due alberi, due caravelle. 
It is presumable to think that they are the mass of the caravels that have returned. Earlier an image appeared that, but excuse me, then did the caravels leave or not? What I can't understand, if Christopher Columbus is an invention, what kind of journey is that? Ah, a real journey made before by someone else. Exactly. Whoever built the tale of Christopher Columbus built it on the basis of what happened before. I was telling you the inquisitions were done to protect the Catholic Foundation, but they are made by four states, the Vatican, the Germans, the Portuguese, and the Spanish. It happens to be the four states affected by the events of the discovery of the Americas. There is at the Piccolomini Library a portion of a painting by Pinturicchio that shows the moment when Enea Piccolomini, then Pope Pio II, introduced to Federico III of Germany, the last emperor of the Sacred Roman Empire, Eleonora of Portugal. Behind them, this one. Behind them, who is there? The one dressed in black with a cross, Nastagio Vespucci. Here is born that plot through which to abduct the truth of the discovery of the Americas. That is Americo Vespucci's grandfather. Nastagio Vespucci. That is why Botticelli made those four paintings with which to denounce the abduction of the truth of the discovery of the Americas, referring to the Boccaccio novel Nastagio degli Onesti. So there is a plot that I am obviously synthesizing for editorial purposes, for space. Quindi c'è una trama che ovviamente io sto sintetizzando per necessità. Certo. Di, di editoriali, di spazio. Also because the hour we have available is running out. Però sono veramente tanti gli elementi che ci lasciano capire come la storia della scoperta dell'America. However, there are many elements that allow us to understand how the story of the discovery of the Americas is in fact a total fiction invented by the church at the expense of those who actually had first access to the Americas in order to develop the change that is still taking place today. I have told you many times that the Dominicans are at the base of the whole movement. After the Columbus tale, the Dominicans became the Jesuits, who did not exist before. Jesuits that we still find today in the double pope without function. And everything revolves around this. Monte di Paschi di Siena, 1472, Banco Mediceo ended. So banking, a certain kind of trade, above all, is a total virtuality. There is a very important phrase that Leonardo said that I always repeat, quote, nothing can be loved or hated without full knowledge of it, unquote. Without knowledge, you do not get to understand what is actually going on. That's why it is so important to approach these subjects precisely, developing a critical sense, something that today our society has completely lost. I got angry. I burn your next question about the story of the influencer of the Uffizi because it's like bringing young kids into the spider's web. You don't take an influencer to bring young people to the Uffizi. You explain to the young people the true course of history, the true meaning behind the works. Showing an influencer in front of Botticelli's Venus makes no sense if you don't explain that the veils that Botticelli's Venus is dressed in are a representation of North America and South America. Alla Venere di Botticelli non ha nessun senso se non spieghi che i veli con cui la Venere di Botticelli è vestita sono una rappresentazione dell'America del Nord e dell'America del Sud. Il dipinto più iconico. The most iconic painting from the Renaissance and the Uffizi that we see. The red veils are a representation of North America and South America, as represented by Malton Wadsimuller in 1507 in the first cartographic representation in which the name, quote-unquote, Americas appears, that is already a part of the mystification of history that has built step by step through all these actions. Listen, and then what happens? The story is built, your reconstruction, and then from there begins the persecution of the people of South America. That is, the various exterminations, the appropriations, because you tell me that before, they were peaceful. So that story can also be, and has functioned, let's say by justification, to say, well, now it is ours because we have discovered it, now we take it. 
Allora, mio professore di macchine ti avrebbe dato Well, my university teacher would have given you an 8 for the use of the verb functioned, which was a must. That is, you were questioned. All you had to do was say quote unquote function and you won. But that's how it is. As I said, the Renaissance ends in 1459, and then the great mystification starts. The church, the Portuguese, the Spanish, what do they do? They take legal possession of the New World, also through a series of papal bulls and through the Treaty of Tordesillas in 1494, and then everything takes on a different meaning. Clearly with the extermination of the local population because they had gold and they took it away from them. There is, in the Cathedral of Seville, a statue behind the altar made with gold stolen from the Native Americans. It's two and a half tons. It's a lot. It's impressive. Two and a half tons. It completely erases whatever cultural reference they had. Solar worship. The Catholic creed is forcibly imposed upon them. Today, most of South America is, in fact, Catholic. It is a conquest for all intents and purposes. It is an abuse of power. The military conquests are always an abuse, let's say. Therefore, the course of history has been profoundly changed. One wonders what would have happened if the other political faction had gone ahead under a cultural profile, under a political profile, under an economic profile. In your opinion, what cultural heirs does that other faction have today? Those who operate in the underworld, like us, in the sense that there is a deep-rootedness of Neoplatonic cult made of knowledge related to natural law, but it is almost difficult to externalize because it is branded as conspiracy. Among other things, a conspirator is someone who plots, someone who reveals. The conspiracy with this hunt for fake news could be a reinterpretation of the Holy Inquisition. Correct, right? That's why I continue to argue that everything was born in the development of the 15th century. Because at some point, as it did not at the time of the Alexandrian Library or the various councils that developed, what does the church do? The people demand knowledge, the church gives knowledge. It burns all the sources and then gives drugged knowledge. Let me say one thing about Leonardo, and then we will eventually do other meetings on Leonardo. We were accustomed to thinking that he was born the son of a notary in Vinci in 1452 because that narrative is written by Vasari, who is considered the official biographer of Leonardo in The Lives, quote unquote. In reality, there are two versions of The Lives, one dated 1568, written with the privilege and license of Pio V, who happened to be the inventor and institutor of the Index Laborum Prohibitorum, and therefore the censorship, and an antecedent dated back to 1550, in which Leonardo is the nephew of the notary in Vinci, who was a good uncle and relative helping him in his youth, and his mother was not even a slave. Quote, because for the mother is born of good blood, unquote. This about Leonardo. But Leonardo is a sort of litmus paper to tell what happens, is the change, the mystification of the documentation, which then changes the course of history. We have seen it with the Americas. So much evidence. October 12th, the landing, the shipwreck on the island of Antila, Santo Domingo. The church takes possession and distorts the course of history and meaning in such a way as to build a completely fictitious reality. Today, we live completely in a fictitious world full of fake news.